Oh, I forgot to unmute. Unmute. Ah, <laughs> thanks, Molly Armas. Well, I was, you know. I do it silently. I'm an, an advanced wizard. We have we have a different setup because I haven't set up the actual mics. So, <laughs> hello and welcome. But yes, lip reading is apparently required now <laughs> for Magical Theory Podcast. More for last week than this. So... <laughs> I'm just going to start playing it whenever. <laughs> hello, hello. And welcome. Mic check, mic check, one, two, one, two. Um, what is that song from? Or what, what song is that from? Mic check, mic check, one, two, one, two. I can't remember. I think it's... It's oh, from wait. a lot, I feel like. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not going to think of well, it. We have to practice our music <laughs> trivia, as we were doing last night. Uh, oh, yeah. What songs did we hear last night? Well, we heard the GIF... The funeral gift song, because you were like, "Oh, I know this song." The f- you said funeral gift. It's like the it's like the cats in space the one, cats. or the dancing. Oh, well, I don't know okay. what it's, it's called. It's also from dun, other things. Dun, 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 yeah, that song. Um, yeah. Also, I got it wrong. It wasn't Vance Joy Riptide. I think I told no, you at the yeah, end. It did. was that. Now I can't think of it. It was a different song. Yeah. We practice our music trivia whenever we poorly, we're out apparently. and about, and we try to guess the song title and artist, so that if we're ever in our actual trivia game in a situation where we well, have to recognize it. So we do geeks who drink every week, but it's just the two of us, so we never win. Uh-huh. The only round we ever beat people in is the music round. Yeah. Every other round, the same teams always get more than us. <laughs> Yeah. So, hello. How's it going? It's going good. I, yeah, it's going good. Eventually, it will be highs in the high 90s. It was still in the hundreds yesterday. It's still in the hundreds here. Just delayed our dinner. In we were Phoenix. like, uh, let's wait a couple hours. <laughs> <laughs> you good to wait? Because it's still hot. Yeah. Then at least the sun was going down at that point. So, like, it's not blasting on you. Yeah. Uh, we started a new show for those of y'all who have Hulu. Yes. It's called Reboot. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> I love how at the beginning I'm like, not sponsored, not collabed. I'm just going to tell you about media <laughs> that we consume. Mm-hmm. We'll, we'll do some free promotion. Um, yeah, so it's like the premise is that they it's the cast of an old sitcom and they're, bring, they're rebooting it. Um, so... That's that's basically it. You're on the set of this rebooted show. It's Judy Greer. Judy Greer. Keegan Michael Key. Uh huh. Keegan Michael Key. Um, uh, the guy from Jackass. Yes. <laughs> and. Uh. I I think I know the the older I don't know. guy, I looked him but up. I don't was, remember his name. I think he was like in some Disney Channel or something. Well, he's in a bunch of stuff. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. No, he's in a bunch of stuff. <laughs> I know hundreds is like out of control, but. Eh. Back to the temperature. I didn't turn on this light. Hello. Oh, hi. Welcome. Good morning. It's bright. <laughs> good morning. <laughs> you want me to turn it down? No, it's good. <laughs> okay. Um, Hogwarts Legacy didn't post anything last week. I don't know what I'm supposed to talk about tomorrow for Magical Gamers Monday. It's just going to be nonsense. <laughs> well, you had a <laughs> video come out theories. last week, so we're going to talk about it. Yeah, that. so we're going to talk about that video a little bit today because yeah, we will. Jeff pulled. The I know. Hogwarts Legacy Password. I don't uh, know. For this I didn't week. even remember it was in there to be chosen. Yeah, it was in there to. Well, I think I put it. We I made started those a putting ago. like magical objects, artifacts that I was like. Yeah, this on the be list. I, yeah. I feel like I did as well, but you know, I did not yeah. all of them. We didn't like try to make an exhaustive list. Yeah. So the clues for this week, um, if you're on Discord, if you're not on the Discord, someone can type exclamation point Discord and have the link pop up. Or you can oh look my. in the description. Um, the first clue was, I tried to make it harder because y'all get it in like one or two. So yeah. I tried to be more We were going to do memory as the first one. I'm like, ah, a lot of people are going to get it. The first one was object. The second one was rare. And the third clue was memory. Yeah. So... I think Josh guessed remember all on the first time, and I was like, oh, interesting, because that also has to do with memory. It does have to do with memory, yeah. <laughs> so the password for today is pensive. We're doing pensive talk, which I'm broadening to talk pensive about talk. memories and the past, basically. Pensive talk, name of our nostalgia podcast. <laughs> pensive talk, a look 
back on well let, let me no. <laughs> uh, let me brag for you okay so i think that video on pensives was excellent yeah we've been talking about different things like this for a very very long time and trying to speculate like well based off the first video and other things that have been said and made what is merlin's deal like what is his deal and then at some point i, I mean i think there was that stone room with the big the big sculpture looking down what that was in the first trailer too right no it was, no, it was just it was in, in the state, state of play, of play. Okay. nothing was in the well that's not true there is there Pensive are backgrounds stuff. of statues in the okay. reveal trailer but the but it state was of the, play was 14 minutes of gameplay correct so. me if i'm wrong because I, I, I believe that i found the sort of the pause thing in the ran rock scene yeah where I was like, I came in one day. We were still in Fresno. Yes, we were in Fresno. I remember coming into your room and being like, come and look at this. And we went back to my computer and like I was watching it on 0.25. And I noted the, the uh, whatever you want to call it, the basin uh -huh. that like we think is a pensive. And then also the starry forest night in the background portal type thing. Yeah. In case you don't know what we're talking about, I posted a video last Monday, and it was about pensives, and it was this giant theory, and there was, like, a lot of stuff in it, and so um, it kind of, it, 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 I think what Jeff is saying is that this has been, like, a long time coming of talking about, or thinking about the role that pensives might play yes. in Hogwarts Legacy. So my point would being that, okay, even though we found that stuff a while ago, like, it took a while to sort of really come together and say something specific and I feel like you did a really great job sort of tell your putting friends. things together <laughs> I think you have a clip don't you have a clip I do have because I feel like the beginning of the clip. clip I like I adore because yeah. it's this nice bulleted list and I'm like this is how I think I, I want to see like okay. okay this was the earliest point and then it connects to this and it connects to this and it connects to this yeah so there's a series of different clips from the videos that I've been like splicing up so one I shared on Twitter but this one is new so in case you missed the video and you want to recap I will recap it for you right now okay let's recap hmm. pensives seem to be relevant to Hogwarts legacy in important ways we're tasked to uncover a hidden truth about Hogwarts and its past our character can sense and manipulate ancient magic, which is key to our dark mystery. Merlin was obsessed with ancient magic. His portrait babbles about it all the time and says things in Hogwarts mystery like, I care only to speak in defense of ancient magic, or this is punishment for losing touch with ancient magic. Here's what I think. Merlin knows the hidden truth about Hogwarts and its history with ancient magic. This makes sense because Merlin was one of the first Hogwarts students. He was close to the founders and was there at the start of Hogwarts, which apparently was built around this powerful pensive that the founders probably discovered. He's obsessed with ancient magic and studied it as a student, and he still seems to have a strong presence in our Hogwarts legacy scenery. Yeah, so it was basically, um, there's like a lot of questions of when we saw the pensive basin in the state of play, which is how the video begins, so we're pausing on it, one of the big questions was, whose pensive is that, yeah. <laughs> you know? So <laughs> pensives are this magical artifact, you can go through people's memories, see, and this is a good point. Uh, the poll for today is exactly this, would you keep a personal pensive in the wizarding world. I mean, I put, yeah, I'm pretty sure Zira is the only person who put no so far. <laughs> yeah, it was 100% and now it's 96%. So And the reasoning is strong. <laughs> the reasoning of let anyone come by and read my memories. I mean, you better not put anything bad in there, I guess. Well, <laughs> yes. I think there were a couple things about that. So the the thing that you're speculating was the Merlin statue looking down was really prominent in the state of play. So it was like, oh, we should be looking at this. We clearly, it's our character walking up to this basin. It's in this like very clearly like place of honor. But then when we found the other one with Ranrock, which might be in Gringotts, 
Mm-hmm. It looked like it was also kind of in the place of honor. It was like in the center of this nice stone yeah, room, I and like obviously go... he came in and like wanted yeah. to defend it. I wanted to go back in there in that scene and see if I could. S- I don't think we could see anything really on the floor. Like there was like the big doors that he bursted through, but I couldn't see anything visibly on the floor <laughs> if there were any designs or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Um, Alan would have a pensive only if I can encrypt it. <laughs> I mean, you have magic. Why not? Mm-hmm. Maybe Merlin encrypted his Two pensives. <laughs> uh, where do you think we'll get the Merlin m- memories from? Do you think they'll be in the pensive or we have to find them? Yeah. It's a good question. <coughs> Excuse me. I got oh, something my in my throat. Because um, there's the... We were speculating also on the wall touch because mm-hmm. of the Autodesk video. Yeah. Yeah. And it seems like that's the same sort of motion and that was labeled with a pensive thing. So maybe it's like capturing well, the memory to go look at it later. Or so like I that. I always call the flame and I, I have to go dig it up. I'm pretty sure Chandler at some point referred to it as the ancient magic flame. Mm. It's a, a symbol of ancient magic theme. is what I think. and But it could also be a symbol of <clears throat> that Merlin created of like... Merlin made this ancient magic symbol, and, like, now you're looking for it. But uh, going back to that scene, Hogwarts is sus. So (laughs) are there memories imbued in the walls? Like, now I'm like, is Hogwarts itself a pensive somehow? Because yes, I, I don't know. But I've seen other people commenting on the video talking about, like, um, whether you get, like, um... There was that scene, and I played it, like, a long time, or a few weeks back, where you, like, just all of a sudden, like, the scenery grays out, and you mm-hmm. grab, like, a scroll of something. Mm-hmm. Maybe not, like, a memory, per se, but, like, th- that suggests to me that there might be different ways that things are hidden in the world. It's a really interesting thought. I hadn't necessarily thought about what Last Marauder is saying in terms mm-hmm. of... Were them? I, I guess in my mind, I was imagining them already being in these pensives that are like hidden and protected. But it would also make sense if you could go find them out in the world. Yeah. Obviously, this is huge speculation. We, we have this thing, and I think it's it's healthy when we speculate. It tends to be a combination of what we think could happen and what we want to happen. And then sometimes I'm like, what if magic yeah. works this way? And it's all like, doesn't it make any sense? I was so. <laughs> so much on the train of like when we heard about Merlin I'm like oh man I want to see Merlin and the founders Mm -hmm. I I was like immediately on that train I was like this would be so fun obviously the game doesn't take place in that time no we are not from that time no but pensive memories are the perfect way to give us cut scenes of yeah Salazar and Godric yeah. Fighting. And well, things. so the other thing that this question or this comment, yeah, question makes me think of is like, so what if there are maybe not like so blatantly a vial, like Dumbledore's memory cabinet with uh, vials of his memories, but like mm-hmm. some sort of thing that that has a memory mm-hmm. or that is containing a memory that we go and find. Yes. And pour into the pensive. So maybe it's yeah. not like in the pensive already. Or and we still like have never know. been able to really crack what's happening with the like golden egg part of the state of play where it like imbues into the castle. Like Fig like does something and it like. Hogwarts is the main enemy. I don't know in what that's legacy. about. No. But I still don't have a good theory of what's going on there, but it's yeah. clearly important. The ancient magic is like, yeah. And how it's so Maybe deeply it's helping tied the castle it. remember. It's like unlocking the castle's memory. Perhaps. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Tara would do it just to relive amazing memories. Not see-, see, this is what I'm saying. Like, why would you... Just like how, you know, bad guys, you're not supposed to text each other. Mm-hmm. Like, your plan. Like, why would you record that memory or keep that memory? But something I wrote down in my notes about Hogwarts Legacy is... Um, so th- these are the questions, and I'm, I'll just pose it to y'all as well. So what memories will we access to understand the context of the wizarding world during the late 1800s Hogwarts legacy time? So of course, we're talking about Merlin right now, but we m- might access other memories, in particular if we have issues with our memory. Like that would be something I'm curious about. Um, whose memories will some be incomplete or tampered with? So that's the other question. Like if there's kind of like a gap, 
So let's say you go into like a memory and there's like something that's like off and we're trying and what if we try to figure out something? Because I guess that would be the only if you're trying to preserve something important that's mm. a secret, would you conceal it first or or try to encrypt it or make something where not anyone could walk into that memory even though I feel like that's what we are going to experience that mm. they're encrypted by ancient magic users. <gasps> You, you can't get to it somehow you either can't get the memories or get to the pensives where memories these memories might have to like function in these particular spots yeah i think there's going to be guardians there's clearly dungeons i don't know yeah. what ran rock's deal is he's pursuing the same thing and maybe because he also has access to ancient magic mm -hmm. he can go get them yeah um, uh, Blue Green also says pensive password with two factor authentication. Yeah, I yeah saw so that we're one. gonna get into that. <laughs> <laughs> what is that term? I can't think of it now. We watched that video where it was like you explain it oh, to Oh yeah. Uh, zero uh zero information something, something with zero in it yeah passwords or zero, yeah i can't remember so it's basically like how 2fa works is that you need so rather than you you get some sort of form of verification without in a, in you, a you don't need a to, secret to verify. it's not like a secret from your past it's just a different type of proof that you are who you say you are yeah yeah, yeah it's really interesting mm -hmm. yeah I, I don't know enough to go into it, but I can't yeah. remember the, the exact term, but it was something like that, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you think it'll be a strong draw to relive powerful memories with friends or loved ones. Someone could use that information against me. So this is one reason. I see that in the poll, the percentage is going down. I see the, I see the nose coming in. Um, yeah, so like this is always kind of tricky with if you with access to information and how it could be used against you or mm -hmm. weaponized against you. Mm -hmm. Like that's always kind of tricky, mm -hmm. um, especially with something something that is the, the what's unique about it is that you can relive it with it's like detail. It's not like a retelling of someone mm -hmm. telling you a secret. Mm -hmm. It's like you're seeing kind of the secret yeah. unfold in front of you. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I always love the... I think it's book... It is book six after Harry and uh, Dumbledore go see Dumbledore's memory of meeting Tom Riddle for the first time. Mm -hmm. And Harry's like, did you know then? <laughs> and, and Dumbledore's like, did I know that I met the most yeah. like, powerful dark <laughs> wizard in history? And he's like, no. And I'm like, Harry... What kind of question is this? Did you Harry, know? Harry's a little just aggressive a little sometimes, bud. where he's just like he doesn't. He's just a teenage boy. He doesn't think. He just like emotionally blurts out stuff. How dare you? <laughs> uh, Hogwarts is alive. One day, someone will walk into a room just full of ew, squishy flesh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Um, oh yeah, this is like a little thing. I get to highlight y'all's comments and be special. Do you think the room of requirement is part of this ancient magic? So like we it's... just talked about the room of requirement this week. We did. Yeah, because I was talking about like what is the deal with the room of requirement? <laughs> Who did somebody make it? That was oh, the question yes, I posed. Because yes. no, we were I, talking I about the okay. founders <laughs> and like, like I, did, what what effect we? they had on the castle versus oh my god to what yeah. extent the castle just changes over time which i think could be their canon way of saying like hey the castle isn't what you expect it to look no like. the castle is i i oh my god the gosh. staircase has moved but i think it could expand and change the more st more or fewer students there are i think so here is uh Here's what I think about the founders. I think the founder... Oh, I, like, freaked out yesterday because I was just like, oh, my God, I figured out, like, another way to... I'm going to talk about something at some point. It's not ready yet, but it's about the founders. And I think that to tap into the founders in a way that makes it... makes everything complicated would be very interesting. Like, you have powerful witches and wizards... They're not here anymore, but they are highly revered. We talk about them all the time. They are immortalized, essentially, in the wizarding world because every student who goes to Hogwarts is sorted into one of these four houses and they tell stories about the founders and who they are based well, on these who characteristics. Who lives, who dies, who tells your story. <laughs> 
The founders made sure that their stories were told. But are they accurate? I think I is know. Your point. I yeah. know. Are we, they? We, yeah. Yeah. We I hinted at that in the first know. video for, on Merlin. Yeah. Uh, Merlin's belongings have been imbued with f a flesh memory, like a sn oh the snitch. Interesting. The that snitch. that would be uh, that would be a credit to the theory that we're a descendant. Uh. But it, but it, f to me, it flies in the face of like, well, then what is Ranrock's deal? Uh -huh. Makes he also a descendant? If so, how is that functioning? You don't have to leave <clears throat> memories in the pensive. If you don't want someone seeing your memories, take them out. <laughs> take them out and destroy. Them. Can, you, can you destroy them? I, I mean, I guess you so, can yeah. alter them, but Let's like, go. what if you take it out and you can, and it's always just some material thing that exists in the universe now. That would be bad. That would be bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, part of accessing the ancient magic may be ancestral or prophetic, but mm. to really unlock it may require opening those memories. Yeah, there's lots of things that people were... I was really excited. So if you haven't watched that video and you have some theories, be sure to comment because we're going to be pulling from those comments for the next video. Uh, or maybe not the next. One of the, the next in the sequence of videos because, you know, we got to work on a nice script and sometimes it takes yeah, long. <laughs> it does take a little while, yeah. Um, but, yeah, thinking about how ancient magic plays a role in relation to these memories, like using it to... Uh, someone was like, they used it, or maybe Merlin used it to lock the pensive or something like that. Yeah. And that's why not anyone can just stumble upon his well, pensive, you know? The way that I, the way it takes a long time for me is because I view it as there's almost no chance that anything we speculate is is right. No. <laughs> but if it was right, <laughs> then it'll the be logic so glorious. is good. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah, that yes, it actually yes. makes sense. Yeah. It could be right in a storytelling Stink, from a story yeah telling, so basically because the when i after the merlin or after the pensive video i like was brainstorming and i started just scripting out things and i was like at this point i'm just writing my own history of hogwarts yes <laughs> like i am making it up right now and i was like i don't know how people will feel about it but that's where my brainstorming led me to at this point um elwin asked can memories be forced out of someone because a pensive only matters if you have memories put in it. I, I feel like, yeah. Yeah. I feel like Bertha Jorkin's got her memories. Bertha. But often not taken in the same way I feel. Well, maybe they, maybe uh, yeah, Lockhart you, did take them. Can you take it and like. Destroyed them because preserve, people would oh, lose their memories. Yeah. And then he took them over. That seems slightly different. Like, could you like take it and <clears throat> put it in some other pensive? Mm. You know, like, could I take your, could I hold you hostage and, like, extract We don't it? know whether the pensive is special. Like, any particular pensive could be used by anybody for yes, any members. Yeah, yeah. Or is it that, like, the pensive is password protected? <laughs> no, I don't, I don't, I don't believe so. Unless, I mean, Harry but I, just what I'm straight saying, up uses the Hogwarts pensive. You know, I book. am surprised that the Hogwarts pensive doesn't have like some sort of extra layer. It's of guarded protection. by the gargoyle that you just need to know. I guess it's random true. Muggle sweets. Like, yeah. Um, why there. would anyone be in that room unless they are allowed to be? I, mean, so. I would for I don't sure know. try to go into that room. <laughs> be honest. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. What's oh, you the got... deal? The room of requirement. <laughs> uh... You leave a memory if it's important to your family's magical history. Spell protect. Yeah. Tampering. Tampering for sure. You would leave Photoshop fake memories. Oh, Blue Green's going to troll everyone in the future. <laughs> mm. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Fake memories. A pensive is like a fictional book. A DVD player. I haven't heard this uh, uh, comparison. Uh, I don't think we store the memories. It's the memories that matter. So those are what you need to be protected. Mm -hmm. And oh, we've talked about this. So the other thing is we've had a whole chapter about pensives yes. that we've we've talked. I don't even remember what we discussed in that episode. We talked about a lot of things. Um, this was part of what we talked about. Is like the uh, what is the existence <laughs> conditions for this memory what's the deal with no i'm just kidding <laughs> yeah what's the deal with pens? i don't think well we also talked a lot about it with wizard unite yeah because in wizard unite people were oh forgetting God. this is parts yes. of their 
I past. forgot. Yes, we talked about memory a lot with Wizards Unite. So first yes. of all, um, like the the brain room studies yeah. thought. So we were talking about like how 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 does this function? Like how is this actually happening? Because this is always it like so many times. The end question I get is, how does magic work? Which I thought was funny because yeah. the Wizarding World's YouTube channel made a video and it was like, how do it was like intro to Harry Potter? How does magic work? And Nobody I was like, knows. are you kidding me? <laughs> You're making this video and I still don't know the answer to that because I listen. I've read the books, I've seen the movies, I talk about the Wizarding World all the time, yes. and I still don't fully understand it, which I think is the point because they don't even yeah. fully understand it either. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I don't think you forget it is what we were talking about because you still no. remember that you had the memory. Yeah. Um, it's just now accessible. It's about the fidelity. Cause at least in, in this one, in this Goblet of Fire book, I think Dumbledore talks about how, like, it's good to be able to revisit it because... I'm starting to forget or like yes because we talked about I, I kind of remember that episode because I kind of asked questions like oh well if you remembered it differently and then you watch it again or relive it again and you feel differently about it like do yes. you have some sort of like <laughs> glitch in your brain being like nope cannot compute <laughs> we also had the conversation of like if you and I were sitting next to each other for the same thing and pulled out the memory for a pensive, would it be the same? Would it look the same? Yeah. Would people say the same things? Is it actually I like still... a 100% objective video camera thing? Yeah. Or is it all colored by, filtered by the person's senses that are taking in the memory and producing it? Yeah. I'm We're... definitely on the latter. I think it, I think that if, if, if Tom Riddle had pulled out the memory from Dumbledore meeting him, it would not be the same. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Uh, last night you said that if you that you know that you would do like wand lore stuff in the wizarding yes, world. Yes, that would. I, yes, I yes. think I would want to be a magical theurist and like try to break to find the breaking points of magic of like sure, what would sure, happen sure. if I but like I, tried to combine pencil. I'm the same way because I know? even said last night I'm like that would be my entryway because yes. we both want to work at the department we of mysteries. We absolutely need to work at the department yes, of mysteries. Yes. yes, yes. <laughs> Yes, and I would be uh, in the brain room. That's the one I would choose. Oh, boy. I'm not, you know, death is too scary and love death is... Death is very scary. What if you fall through the veil? Experienced. I don't need to study it. <laughs> uh, Star Geezer, Tim says, can someone use occlumency to alter or block a memory from being taken? Uh, for instance, Slughorn muting the memory of the Horcrux and Tom. So, yeah, occlumency is interesting you brought that up because I, um, I, well, oh, man... Oh, man. Oh, man. Maybe the brain room is where we need to be. Because there's, there, in the chapter, when I was writing down notes, I was, th I was down these different rabbit holes and thinking about, like, there's a, there's a lot of stuff in the wizarding world that kind, that doesn't seem related, but has, it's unified or categorized, can be categorized with memory. So we have pensives. We have, like, you were talking about Lockhart, like, erasing people's memories or trying to alter them and stuff like that. Then you have like entering people's minds and stuff, and I don't know. I don't know the answer. I I, I have nothing to add other than I don't know. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm not sure, but I think someone should experiment and see what happens. Do you think they have people that are like, uh, it's like sign up for this research study for the wizarding world? <laughs> well, you, I, several several years ago we were brainstorming different. Harry Potter related content that we could make and grad I had school. the the idea of doing the grad school yeah <laughs> like Harry Potter grad school I'm a research assistant at Hogwarts <laughs> School of Witchcraft and, <laughs> and and in that we had the the premise was that the this person or group of grad students would be attending Hogwarts mm -hmm. at the same time as Harry Potter so they would have this <laughs> very like aloof and third party vision of all the events oh, of the oh Harry gosh. Potter thing like the triwizard tournament they'd probably like go attend it and then leave halfway because they're like I yeah gotta, i gotta go finish this paper uh they Very they're just great they're just raiders for they're the... grading it yeah 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 yes oh my Snape's gosh like here i had you know i got angry again and i had to give them you know 10 feet of parchment to fill 
about this simple you know, esoteric topic. So, you know, you grade this for me. There's still time. We can still make that. <laughs> if anyone wants to watch that kind of content. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we thinking about memories as copies, I think going back to your fidelity thing of like what... I mean, I, I am most curious about two people that are in the same room, same moment, like, let's just go look back and forth and see what those differences are. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. So I, I have never seen, uh, seen, I've never played Cyberpunk 2077. Nor have I. Can we potentially but somebody see... somebody else said the same thing. As Maybe comment, it was right? Miguel, but yeah. Miguel, it, was... it might have been you, but can we potentially see mechanics similar to that brain dance where you fully explore memories? I looked it up because I was like, you? Oh. I want to see what it looks like. Yeah. It kind of reminded me, you remember that game I played, The Signifier, and you like switched back between like objective and subjective states and you were in yes, like and navigating. Yes. And you're, are you the detective? Yeah, you're a detective. Because I played that for a little bit. It tripped me out. Yeah, it yeah. kind of reminded me of that a little, mm. but it was interesting because I don't, so I didn't fully understand like how the memories were being like recreated i just kind of i just wanted to see like what did it look like while you were in the memory and like how you were moving around well i love so, the idea and I, it seems I feel, really cool i hope for that as mm -hmm. well if we go back to the because we had even flirted with the idea of like are we able to alter it but then that's a terrible we, i mean we talked about time travel <laughs> and the effects of it yeah and I, so i don't think that will be the case at all it's not possible to pull off but but being able to maneuver in it and yeah. maybe pause it and replay it and like see yes. things would be really cool. And be like, let me go. Look I also over think here they'll, they're Easter. just gonna be cutscenes if it's, it, if it's in there. I, I think it'll be cutscenes. But... Dear Hogwarts Legacy, are you watching? Can you tell us? <laughs> well, they clearly have like good cutscene creators, so it, it seems like one of the reasons they have people who are that yeah. good is because maybe it's integral to the game, like you you're yes. going to be seeing these memories. Yeah, so they can also, like, graphically build out certain callbacks. So the, my, my insistence that Diagon Alley is not actually, we can't explore it, but we might see Diagon Alley somehow is what if, tied to pensive memories. What if the Hogwarts pensive, what if we they did find it, it was there, and there was a memory in it? And the I, four founders listen. looked at it, and then they were like, we need to build something here because... The world is ending here. The Sarmageddon. Well, what if... So here, I had, like, also other thoughts of, like, why is it half buried in a ground in the ground? Was there a war at Hogwarts, pre-Hogwarts? And yeah. there's, Yeah, and I was know, like, what if there was already a school there? <gasps> like, previously. I'm trying to think of... What, what is Hogwarts backwards? That's too hard for me to try to... Stro star straw. Straw. Strago. <gasps> What if it's Ghost War? Ghost War. Ghost War. Hogwarts <laughs> Legacy is about a ghost war. <laughs> that was just the best. I had that on our table because oh, we would do these anagrams because it was somewhat a joke from Wizards Unite because we did it We thought that it was a coded message. It, there was no uncode. coded message. But it was just hilarious. But I, I actually pulled out the Scrabble tiles yeah, because I, it's really it great to have tactile things. And one day I had Hogwarts, I had I think I had Hogwarts Legacy out there, and I like oh, yeah. played with Hogwarts, and I put Ghost War, and I just left it there for like months. <laughs> it was just on one of our coffee tables, just Ghost War. Uh -huh. Yeah, I made that vid. It's like that collab with. It's Rita. in there. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah it's in there. I forgot about that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> So Alexis also <laughs> is going to work at the Department of Mysteries with us. Can you put a memory of you being in a pensive yes. in the pensive? Yes. Pensive memories all the way down. <laughs> yes. Oh, my goodness. We are in a pensive right now. Yeah. Yeah. The Raxperts. The Raxperts. Remember <laughs> that? Oh. <laughs> There's a Niffler giving the side eye to your like button. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Our real-life Niffler is where, passed out. Where is the Niffler? Oh, there it is, right there. <laughs> Over the shoulder. Oh, wait, you can't see Probably it. Can't it's see above it. Pickett. It's we, like just we have a stuffed high. animal Niffler. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. You don't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two pepper people's memories would be different. Focus on certain parts. I, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, that would be cool if, like, if there was some sort of, oh, what if we, oh, man. Because one of the questions on Discord that we've been chatting about is, like, what did we survive? Mm. We survived something, like, 
Was there another uh, no. witness there? Uh, Could we like look at our memory? Did what if fig our memory us? is a t- oh fig? <laughs> what happened to that? I love how quickly that caught on. People were like, "I understand storytelling." It was, no, and it was, I've seen this. That guy is bad. It was literally <laughs> it was immediately, yeah, immediately after immediately. the state of play. People were like, "Fig is the it, bad guy." <laughs> yes, and I feel like it was specifically because he was so friendly in all yes, of it. It's like yeah. no, they're showing There's him something they're more to this, this guy. Why yeah. are you helping us? I don't. I don't trust Trust you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Are you physically drawn into the pensive or is it in your mind? I think it's in your mind, right? Yeah. Because doesn't Harry like Yeah, it pulls, pulls, pulls people out yeah. of it. Um would magic be like what's said in the sorcerer's apprentice physics and manipulation of energy? That's interesting because of ancient magic, the way that we seem to call lightning and yes. do stuff well, like that. Well we talked about that like I mean, there's very commonplace explanations for the existence of magic generally. Yeah. It's either invented, which is like a very arcane sense, or it's natural, which is like druidic, or it's yeah. divine. Yeah. Those are tip... I mean, like D&D obviously plays with all of them. But in general, in the stuff that I see, the fic- the, the fantasy that I have read and, and watched, those are typically... Yeah. The causes. All of them could be present. It's just interesting to think about. But it does feel like ancient magic is potentially our route towards natural magic. I'm interested in Adult Bert waffling. Like, how did you come up with your... Bert? Old Bert? (laughs) Old Bertie. Bertie bots? (laughs) How did you come up with these magical laws or whatever? Also, Stargies are time. Thank you. Welcome to Associate. Um, if you are in our Discord server, just just at me and I can add you to if you're not already it now autoed in the patron member chat, so you can get the secret chat and monthly hangouts. Secret chat. Secret so, chat. So, so, so. Secret chat. Uh, our memories are video camera, and in the moment we only see what we're focused on. Oh, okay, okay. But when we review it, we see so much more that our brain didn't pick up in the moment. Kind of like teacher Yes, noticing. I like that idea because it's very much the case that our brains and focus, yeah. part of what we do is we, there's a ton of, um, I don't know what to call it, but like sensory You're, detail yeah. that we uh, basically ignore. Right. And... It would be it. one of the things that video cameras do is that they allow you to revisit and refocus. Yes. Yeah. So. But I wonder if things would be clouded, right? Mm. Like, it, is it exact? Does it have the fidelity of our senses, or is it more like, well, I wasn't paying attention to that, so I I don't quite know what was on the screen, even though like I've looked at the screen. Yeah. Would it be there? You know. Yeah. As I thought, I've thought about this stuff a lot because, as you know, my memory is not amazing. So I often yeah. think about why why I can remember some things really well and other things not at all, and it sort of like. And then you have a stuff. song, and it saves you from. Well, I'm Becca. very good at songs. Yeah. Well, sure. <laughs> It would be in the end by Lincoln. Park. That's how that works. So a side note. So like uh, when I was a professor, I studied things like teacher noticing. And so like that, that's what that comment reminded Prof. me of is that you could only like it's not feasible for teachers yes. to notice everything that's happening. And so part of the professional training is like attending to things and making sense of it yes. and being able to be like, what do I do with this I'm information? I'm training your focus as well to yeah. notice things that people who are not experts in teaching yes. wouldn't notice as important. They yeah. would maybe be more focused on something more obvious or more outburst more everyday pedestrian yeah. of like, yes, an outburst as yeah. opposed to something else. Yeah. Like, and it gets even to the granularity of like, what people are saying relative to what you're learning. So in that sense, it kind of seems like memories are not, I mean, in addition to focus, it's more of like, what is your perception or like, what is the thing? Like if I'm having a conversation with Snape, I feel like that uh, is going to be clouded by my relationship with Snape of what I notice or what I think about in that. So the subjectivity is a huge question as well. So I think there's subjectivity, objectivity, and also focus. Mm -hmm. All of those are sort of interesting. I'm not sure. I mean, at least the way it was represented to me 
in this stuff yeah. is like more like a video camera. Yes, yeah. Where you can relive like the, the, detail the detail is and... unless Dumbledore has like an eidetic memory, it doesn't make any sense. And then but then we see it with Snape and and with Slughorn and like yeah. Somehow it's like a storage. It's much more computery. More questions. What I know, if, I saw. What about the memory like, of oh someone God. who is blind and or deaf? <laughs> I don't question. know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. These no. are excellent questions. Who do we write to to be like, excuse yeah. me? Yeah. Hey, Hogwarts Chandler. Legacy writing team. Yeah, <laughs> Chandler, put us in touch with the writing team. Writing and because they did research as well. Like, not just, of course, Wizarding World research, but like research that, like, real life research of. I mean, they know they mentioned architecture, but I'm sure they've, like, also. They probably have like, some. Hey, sort Chan, of- <laughs> Freeman, like. Hey Chandler, if a tree falls in the forest, but I'm focused on the Quidditch match, do I still hear it in my pensive memory? <laughs> Thank you. Question of the day. Love, Prof. <laughs> oh my uh, god! It's on your resume. Yeah. It's on your cover letter for the Department of Mysteries. Some kind of. I just what send happens? send owls. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Okay, well, long discussion. Long discussion. I Focused definitely. Focused chapter, though. There's not like a ton to discuss yeah. in today's chapter. I mean. But is it. Magical theory. We gotta. Oh, I forgot. We gotta pull. We have to pull. We have to pull. I, I got you it. You got it? Okay, yeah. it's in the Gryffindor mug that's right yes, there. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> so every week we pull, and there's a new <laughs> password, and that's the theme for next week. It doesn't have to be related to the chapter at all, but we just talk about it. Dive deep, talk about Hogwarts Legacy, talk about the Wizarding World, and ask all the questions. I'm pulling. All right. I post clues for this every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. (laughs) Okay. Okay. (laughs) All right. Well, Mm -hmm. with that. No hints, no hints. Just our laughter. But we laugh at all of them, so it's not actually a hint at all. (laughs) We do. That's our. If we did a compilation of all our reactions, it's just looking at the thing and going. (laughs) Giggle. (laughs) (laughs) All right. It's time. Magical theory podcast time. Wands ready. ready. Do you have to play the music? I already did. You already did. Okay. Well. uh... I can play it one more time. Ready. Oh, I think it's... It's pretty quick, yeah. (laughs) Fantastic. Thank you. Turn to page 659, Priori Incantatum. Today's lesson is called The Past is Never Far Away. The chapter begins with Harry receiving his wand from Wormtail so that he can properly duel Voldemort. Voldemort makes Harry bow and then leads with Cruciatus. He asks Harry if he wants the pain again, and when Harry doesn't respond, Voldemort uses the Imperious Curse. Harry resists and breaks the spell, jumping behind a gravestone. Voldemort promises to end it and kill Harry, and Harry decides to face him head on. He spins out from behind the headstone and casts Expelliarmus, which meets Voldy's killing curse in the air. The spells lock and an epic experience follows. Harry sees sees small beads of light riding the connection between their their wands and focuses on pushing the beads to Voldemort's wand. They release shades of Voldemort's spells. Wormtail's new hand, then Cedric, then Frank Bryce and Bertha Jorkins, and finally Lily and James Potter. They comfort him and share a plan then rush toward Voldemort and the Death Eaters to give Harry enough time to grab Cedric's body and Accio the cup port key. So I've only read this book once in my life all the way through. Well, I'll say one and a half times because I've read it. The, when it first came out, I read it halfway and then I was like, nah, I'm good. So that, um, I don't remember Peter Pettigrew's severed hand. <laughs> Poppin, or not severed, but the the recreated hand. It's not in the movie. out of there. Yeah, yeah, it's not in the movie. Birth is also not in the movie because no yes, one cares no, about her. Yes. I rewatched the movie scene this morning because my favorite you part. Did? Yeah, my favorite part oh. is when Daniel Radcliffe, when he's behind the thing and he Voldemort, steals himself. Yes, and he. I'm just like that face. I'm just like yes, ten out of ten. Please. Well, and because so he says, good. have it your way. Have it your yeah. way. <laughs> and Daniel really uh, gives that line. Yeah. It works really well. Oh, yeah, gosh. I agree. It's so good. It's so good. Poor Cedric. 
<laughs> he had no chance. And even in that moment, I mean, that's fascinating. Obviously, it comes back in the seventh book to bite him a little bit, but using Expelliarmus, the choice, the choice. Oh my god! It's gosh. such an uh, it's such a peculiar well, it's funny choice because he said he was in his head. He's thinking like, oh, I I've. I only did Dueling Club that one time, and I only learned Expelliarmus, but clearly he knows other spells. Yes, yes, yes. So yes, it was just yes, very yes, interesting yes, that yes. he, because he did, like, the thing at the Death Eaters to try to, like, ma- block them or whatever. Yeah. Um, trip them up. Um, I have a question, though. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. Please tell me this is about it, the Imperius Curse. Uh, no, I'm going to okay, get to that okay, next. Okay, uh, okay, when okay. the series was releasing, mm. did we know how many books there would be? Like, or, like, in this moment when the book first came out did you think that there was a chance that harry would die or did you know oh there's more books coming so he won't die in this moment this is a question for everyone because i don't know i don't know if we literally knew but i think the speculation was pretty strong because it says like year four on the book spine and stuff like that there would be seven oh okay okay that there would be seven Mm -hmm. yeah but I don't know if we literally knew. I don't know if it was just declared that there will be seven books. It might have been because she wrote them very quickly. Yeah. When you compare it to like, <laughs> you know, you know, you know who to <laughs> you compare know, it you to. Know. <laughs> um, Patrick Rothfuss and George R. R. Martin. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I was just wondering because I was thinking about, oh, in his head, like the way his monologue is just like, Harry's. there's no, Harry's monologue. There's no way I'm going to, you know, the kill, there's no defense against the killing curse. And even if I somehow do uh, I'm disarm still him, screwed. there's 30 you, death eaters here. Yes. You know, yes. like what, how are you getting out of this it, situation? It is, a, it is a brilliant representation of fighting a lost cause. Mm. It, the, the cause is lost. Yeah. You know, when the fall is all that left, when the fall is all that's left, it matters a great deal. That is a famous, I can't remember what movie it's from, Mm. but it has something to do with like, what's, it has to do with when the only thing left is dying or the only thing left is, you know, a collapse or whatever, then it it matters Mm -hmm. how you die, you know? Mm Mm-hmm. And that's represented here. Like, it, somehow it matters. Not only does it matter, but obviously yeah. in the fantasy world, we get the, that we actually see value. It actually plays out that he turns and does this, like, alters. If he didn't do that, then it wouldn't go this way. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot wrapped up in, well, because there's not a lot of speaking from Harry. There's a lot of thinking from Harry yes. in this book. Yeah. So there's a lot tied up. Uh, He's getting taunted by the everyone. The hide and seek thing, and like yeah. he specifically mentions, "I'm gonna stand like my father," like that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. It's just, it's, it's really, really intense. It's really intense. The whole scene is intense. Yeah. I mean, start to finish, Voldemort just forces him to bow. Yeah. Even the choice, it's he's playing with his food, the choice to yeah. give him the wand and be like, oh, we're going to duel because Voldemort is so supremely confident. Yep. It, the irony being that, like, he still can't see his mistakes. Like, well, the other why thing... Why are you doing this? If he wasn't so egotistical, yes. he would just be like, Wormtail, kill Harry. Well, because also, that would be it. he specifically called the Death Eaters... Basically, as the audience, just, yes, to be yes. like, okay, yes. I'm going to kill Harry Potter now, yes. and I'm just thinking, how old is Voldemort at this point? In his fifties, right? Maybe no, older, older than, than that. that. Yeah, you're an old man obsessed with killing a teenage boy. Like, chill oh, out, boy. Totally <laughs> obsessed. Like, gosh. I mean, it's the tyrant's oh, downfall. Gosh. They always create it themselves. Yeah. I I think. Uh, yeah, forced to bow, Crucio Imperio Avada Kedavra. Yeah, in, let's in go order. through the sequence of what unforgivable <laughs> curses. Well, it's Crucio Imperio, then Crucio again, which yeah. is... Uh, so right. it doesn't seem like you can counter or protect against Crucio. Yes, unless this is what I want to talk about. Unless you um, anticipate or you see, and you, it's like a time-based thing. If, are you quick enough to avoid it? Well, I have a couple of thoughts. One is, if you cast Protego, could you weaken it where it would Mm. hurt, but not as much? The second is, we know that in the seventh book, after 
the one the elder one doesn't respond to Voldemort. I believe he like tries to do Crucio on somebody and it like it doesn't hurt them that much. I think it's Neville. Mm-hmm. He tries to do Silencio and like it do- doesn't keep them silent. And so so there is some type of ancient magical type of a protection that's possible. Mm-hmm. But nowhere at least not discovered at this point in the same sense as the Imperial. Imperial curse can be l- literally fought and overcome. Yeah, so what I wrote down was that it doesn't seem like you can have, like, physical fortitude yeah. to Just uh, the pain protect. tolerance? Yeah, like, if you just have a high pain tolerance mm-hmm. um, or whatever, in, um, in the fate uh, session we had on Thursday, it was something about, like, a... Cindy probably knows the uh, the term for it, but like being resistant to feeling pain or not feeling pain or something like that, mm-hmm. being an actual. There's thing. a real person that has this. It's very yeah. very rare. Yeah. yeah. So. It's quite dangerous. It is. It is. Yeah. Pretty dangerous. Because um, so much of our stimulus response has to do with like, touching the stove once. Yeah. So the cruciatus thing. curse seems pretty effective at like disarm completely disarming your foe because. As Harry describes it, like, he can't even, he didn't even know where he was sort of thing. Like, so it doesn't, unless you can, like, outrun it or, like, avoid getting hit by it, there doesn't seem to be a protection, but maybe Protego, I don't know, would it just slice through it? Imperio. There there also seems, one more thing. Yeah. With Crucio, I think we really learned that there seems to be degrees of power of casting it. People can be strong. Oh, yeah, yeah, do yeah. That's worse Bellatrix Crucio. talking about, like... When Harry does it, it's not as strong on Bellatrix as mm. when, you know, Voldemort does it. Mm. That's interesting. Is that also true for Imperio? It seems... I think we learned from Moody... Fake Moody, Foodie in this book... <laughs> Foodie. ...that the Avada Kedavra also has degrees, where it's like, if you're not strong enough and you cast the spell, it'll just cause a, a nosebleed. He says something like oh. that. If any of you cast it on me now, it would just make my nose Yes, bleed. he does say that. So you have to... That there's like a power... Yeah. ...something or other. Okay, so which makes Imperio... An interesting case, as you mentioned, because it seems like it's a test of mental fortitude or will. Um, I wasn't sure, because I looked this up and lots of people were discussing this as well. Um, Harry might be a special case. Uh, This is just me talking. I, I don't know if that's not anything. Just because of his literal connection to Voldemort, I'm not sure. I think, though... Because in the later books, when Snape is doing the legilimens and trying to teach him occlumency, that uh, he makes a comment and it's about like, oh, you can, whatever, res- I don't know if you use the word resist, but basically you can resist Imperio, like, let's see, it's yes. similar, but yes. it's not because he can't, he can't really do the same thing as he's doing here. So it might be it might be one of those things where uh, there's kind of some like in your headness that's happening, but maybe the thing that is interacting is different or like how that works. Again, I don't know how magic and stuff works, uh, but apparently <laughs> Harry is also on able. your cover letter for yeah. Department of yes, hire me. I don't know how it works, but I want to know. Hey, what's the deal with CDs? How do CDs? Work? <laughs> yeah, so I wrote to my in my notes like it makes me question. The strength of the Imperious Curse in relation to the other two unforgivable curses. Because although we are also talking about, like, degrees for these other ones, but if... Well, I think we learned that Barty Crouch Sr. was recasting the Imperial Curse on his son, mm-hmm. on the reg. He, it was recasted, reapplied. So it wasn't like he cast the Imperial Curse once really strongly and therefore it lasted. Or or Barty Crouch's Jr. Barty Crouch Jr.'s will wasn't strong enough, so it took many years. No, it was recasted over and yeah. over again. I think when we see Harry use it in the seventh book on, say, the goblin uh in Gringotts, like that releases from I believe the thief's downfall or like Harry's lack of focus. So mm. it's it's quite interesting. Yeah, yeah it seems I'm not very sure. complicated. It makes me feel complicated about it because I 
I assumed that all of these unforgivable curses, if cast properly, are like all consuming. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, that you could probably. Well, what it gets to, them, which but... is really interesting, is intent and potential as opposed to like ex post what actually happens. Like, if you ca if I cast a vada on you, but it doesn't kill you. Oh. It's still an unforgivable curse, right? Like, it doesn't matter that I didn't murder you. Like, I should still face the penalty. I, I feel like that's the idea of calling it unforgivable. It's not just the outcome has to happen. It's the point. Like, if I block it or dodge it, like, you st you know, attempted murder. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Uh, Avada though is there is no blocking, which is why he that's the whole no deal blocking. with Just Harry. Yes. Of surviving it seems it, ridiculous. That we know. You know? Of. That we know of. That we know of. What have we survived in Avada and Hogwarts I Legacy? Mean, Harry <laughs> does survive it. Yes, yes. So it's possible. And so one of the questions of like having access to ancient magic is, could you cause yourself a shield against this thing on purpose? intentionally on yourself or mm. does it have to be another person's sacrifice or blah 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 mm. yeah well killings can oh. survive avada okay. so can phoenixes i believe fox Phoenix. eats one eats. yes in in the order of the phoenix shoot was that what it well, is phoenixes i think can be in the duel i believe fox Hit gets hit by an Avada Kedavra spell from Voldemort. And wow, then, I might be making that oh up. Oh my but gosh! I'm pretty sure. I mean, you and then they die and re sense. they are yeah. reborn. Wait, do yeah. phoenixes are they immortal? <laughs> I, no, because there's only one left, so that doesn't make any sense. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, well, yeah. so survival is relative, okay. JP. Yes, for sure. <laughs> but somehow, it's it at least is not a universal. We know. Yeah, so I feel, well, I guess I'm distinguishing Imperio because if all it takes, and this is simplifying it quite a bit, if all it takes is some sort of mental will or fortitude, then then it, it, it it's more hackable than the other two curses. So, like, then I can say that I was imperio and wasn't, or, I you know, like, there's stuff that's, well, like... Not only can you say that, a ton well, of they them do. did. That's yes, what Lucius yeah. got away with, yeah. But then I'm like, socially, though, if like how common is it for people to resist an imperious curse? Because well, if you can just by you your know like will... little kids are like... Oh, I didn't do that. I, you know, I was under the <laughs> imperious curse. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, like, if it can be resisted, then, like, wouldn't it be some sort of shameful thing to be like, oh, I wasn't... You know, I didn't have enough will to overcome this. But I th also think that in this specific moment that's happening right now, Harry already is, like, in a mindset. So he's already, like, uh, queued up to resist Voldemort at all costs or whatever, to, like, not bow down to him, to, like, be totally, like, um, non-compliant. Resistance is not futile. So he's, it's already like there. So maybe yes. that's like also part of it in the circumstance of like, what is it that is, I don't know. I don't know. It is very interesting though. There is a Phoenix song. You mentioned Phoenix. Yes. yes. A Phoenix It's also not song. present in the movie. Um... The Which is song quite interesting. Supposedly increases the wow. courage of the pure of heart and strikes fear into the hearts of the impure. Where is it coming from? I think the wand cores. Oh. I think because it's a phoenix feather. I th In both of them. I mean, it sounds kind of wild, but so does the rest of all of this. <laughs> But, because I don't think that, so in Chamber mm. of Secrets, where Harry heard it before, it was Fox. Yes. Fox Mrs. was Fox's tail actually there. Yeah, so I think it's because the wands are, like, glued in their little <laughs> position, where it's like, you know, yeah, exactly, that's what's happening. Mm -hmm. And then the the phoenix, maybe the vibration of the wands is making the yeah, song. Yeah, how do CDs work? <laughs> how do CDs work? <laughs> I think it's from the cores. Yeah. I think it helps, too. This is interesting. I never thought about that. Yeah. I think it helps with completely. both Harry and Voldemort. And it's funny, in the movie scene, um, there's a certain point, you don't hear a song 
I don't think, because it's just like the regular, unless that's the Phoenix song, no, is yeah, the movie the, music. The, the, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Harry's holding his wand with one hand, and then he grasps it with two, yes. and then Voldemort starts struggling, and Lucius is in the background, and he's like getting ready to help, and I'm just like, nope. No, no. You suck. I know, exactly. You suck, guy. <laughs> So, Priori Incantata Tatum, yep. I've, I've learned how to spell this. I've, I've spelled it wrong many times, but it's Tate. Incantatum. Which, so, there's an E, not a U or an A or a whatever vowel you want to put there. It's an E at the end. Um, it's recalling the most recent spells. That's why we see all that stuff. Oh, the, all the people. It's a bunch of death and some weird hand that pops out of there. Well, we saw it used in the beginning of this book on Harry's wand to see that it conjured the dark mark. Barty Crouch Sr. uses a spell Mm -hmm. that produces, manifests a little version of the spells that his wand had most recently cast. And so it shows the dark mark Mm -hmm. being cast. Obviously, Harry didn't cast it. but So we know it to be a spell, but this, again, like, is is an, an unconscious event. Yeah. It's not like Harry cast the spell. To yeah, do so the spell incantato. is prior incon- incantato. That's where you like look at the wand and you identify. Well, this makes me know. think about the fact that in the Hogwarts Legacy thing we saw on the floor, I can't remember which spell it was, but it was in that temple and it was spelled differently. Oh, than yeah. The, tip- the typical way that it's taught. So, like this evolution of. Yeah. Not to mention different languages. But mm. yeah. It, it, yeah, priori incantatum. Yeah, maybe the result of that spell, but yeah, it's really it's really interesting. I mean, it's just Voldemort's it's chosen wand one is screaming. vibes it's all like... over the place because Harry isn't intending for any of this no. to happen, and the fact that not only that but the shades that emerge literally have a plan. Yeah, so I read a bunch tell of him the plan. threads about like how is, is this it, just in Harry's subconscious? How is it that they know all these things? I saw some thoughts about potentially there's this like it, it, underworld sort of thing. If Cedric died, he told Harry's parents that or whatever, whatever. Well, they're I, always I with him. They are always with him. So they're always there. The past is never far behind. Oh. Far away. Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I think it's... Roll credits. Roll credits, okay. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the title voyage. of this episode. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know. I don't mm-hmm. know. The whole situation is quite interesting, and and the the execution of a way out is so obvious once it happens. It's like, oh, obviously, Harry's way out. The, the oversight is so minor. It's like they don't even consider the fact that they used a port key to execute this plan oh, yeah, but it's yeah, still yeah. a port key it is there yeah and you know because if they would have if it would if they would have thought about it you just destroy the cup gosh uh, or destroy the port key i'm Speaking sure you can like, of erase focus, it. Do you, like does do you remember where the port key landed <laughs> oh my gosh i would be so frazzled in this i would be dead thing you learned i would you. not be here <laughs> if i were harry potter in this situation i would just panic and be like okay this is why i'm not a gryffindor <laughs> either <laughs> i am not a gryffindor oh boy intense well, though oh no poor and not, do you know what comes Amos. next bum, bum, no bum. i know bum, bum, bum. Gosh, it's the worst. It's the worst. <laughs> it is. It's agonizing. The worst part of Goblet of Fire movie. <laughs> yeah. Is that and by, haunting? And by worst, you mean sad. It's very sad. The haunting Hogwarts march. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. It's rough. All right. Well, that's all that we have for y'all. Until next time, wands ready. Wands ready.